Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dig in. So for those that are interested, I've just got a basic setup here with a plane as a background, the sphere that I'm going to be shading in the middle, a camera pointing straight at it, three lights pointing at an empty or tracked to an empty that I've got uh, positioned in the center of the sphere, and then just a light pointing at the background. So to see what that looks like in the shading tab, here we go. So I'm in the viewport, uh, sorry, I'm in the shading tab with viewport shading enabled using the cycles render engine. And I've already got a glass shader applied to this. So that's currently what we are seeing. But we've got a fair bit to get through and to add. So let's make a start. <coughs> I am actually going to delete that glass shader for now. I'll add it back in later. The first thing that I'm going to add is a Voronoi texture. Plonk it there. Let's plug that into the surface. And then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate that. And of course, if you want to know where these are, Shift A to search for them or load them from the menus. Uh, for the top one, I'm going to leave the settings as they are for now. For the bottom one, I'm going to change this um, feature output to end sphere radius. What I'm then going to do is add a math node, M-A-T-H, drop it on the connector between the Voronoi and the material output, and connect the radius of this Voronoi texture to the value, and change this to less than. That's what give us, gives us our dotty dots. Now between the math node and the output, I'm going to position a color ramp and change the interpolation mode to constant. And I'm going to move the white value pretty much all the way over in fact, actually, what I'm going to do is flip the color ramp. So basically, that changes anything that was black to white and anything that was white to black. Yes, that'll do me. Okay, now we need to add some color to those. So I'm going to duplicate that color ramp, but I'm going to change it to HSL color mode and far as the color... Um, interpolation. Change that first color to bright red just by increasing the saturation and hue to 1. And then the second color, value and saturation up to 1 and the hue to 0.99. And that gives us perfect rainbow. Next up, I want to add a mix shader, not mix RGB, mix shader. Plop it in here. And move this value to the factor. And plug the color into that shader. And you can see now the color is being applied to where we had our dots. We then need to connect up the color from this or the color output from this Voronoi texture to the color ramp at the bottom. And what that does is spreads the colors out so that each dot is a different color. Now I'm going to add that glass shader back in and I'm going to connect that to the bottom slot in the mix shader. Now we have dots all over our glass surface. Right, 
Now I want to be able to control the texture coordinates. So select the Voronoi texture, press Ctrl T to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. You can search for those and add them manually if you need to. Change the output from the texture coordinate to object. And then connect this to the vector of the bottom as well. You can basically see that if I don't do that, it kind of starts splitting those colors and making a mess of the pattern. But so that this node and this node have the same texture coordinates, we need to connect them both up. And that's fixed it, as you can see. Just move these down a bit so that the connectors are visible. Okay, now that's good, but what I want to do is actually replicate this quite a few times. And it's actually these five nodes here that I want to replicate. So I'll select them all and press duplicate. And I'm going to do that twice. Now what we'll do is connect up the vector output into all of the vector slots from these um, Voronoi textures. And what I want to do is be able to just use one value to control all of these. So I'm going to put in a value node. Oops and then three math nodes. One and then duplicate it. Connect this value up to the top slot of each one. Change each one to multiply. Oops, didn't want to click that. And then we're going to plug this value into the scale of the first two. The second one we're plugging into the scale of the second two Voronoi textures. And the third one we're plugging into the scale of the second two, uh, third two, third pair. So basically we've got three pairs and in the same way that I wanted to control the vector for both of these so that it's the same. I also want the scale to be the same. So that's why I'm using one node to power two of these Voronoi textures. Now, we're gonna change these multiplication values. So the top one we're gonna put at one, the middle one at two, and the bottom one at four. And we're gonna set this value to 1.5. Now. Not a lot's happening at the moment because we've still only got this top collection plugged in. So let's drag this out a bit. Now I have missed one node that I particularly wanted to use and it's not one that we always think about and it's the anisotropic BSDF. And I'm going to put that in between the rainbow color ramp and the mix shader. I'm going to set the roughness to 0.125. Second value, which I can never pronounce, anisotropy, to 0.75. And this last value, which is rotation, to 0.25. Now, I'll duplicate him as well and connect him up and that's color to color from the rainbow to the anisotropy okay so now what I need to do is basically duplicate this mix shader couple of times because I need to replicate what I've got going on up here so the color goes into the factor from the black and white 
and the color from the color ramp goes into the anisotropy and then that goes into the top slot of the shader again black and white to the factor and the output from the anisotropy into the top slot of the shader now I need to bring those all together before they hit the material output so I'll add an add shader oops what the heck's that add shader there we go and I'll plop him in there and then another one just before that so I've got two in a row and basically this is feeding into this this is feeding into this so I'll connect this up to this and then this up to this so now we've got all three of those with their different scales going in uh, one at a time into that mix to give us this final output now it does look quite complicated but if you think of it this way this lot creates the largest spots I think this lot creates the smaller and this creates the smallest I think that's right let me just check yes so what we could do is we could um, add a frame so we would want to frame those and then we would want to frame those and then we would want to frame those oops come down there we go we could also create groups but at the end of the day this keeps it kind of all visible to us and if we give our frames names small dots medium dots and then oops I've named them wrong small dots is at the bottom medium dots is in the middle large dots is at the top now would it be worth us putting this in here probably would actually wouldn't it so let's do that. And then this one in here. And this one in here. Now you can change the color of the glass by um, changing this here and of course the index of refraction. Uh, let's just line those up a bit so they're neater. Bring them over. That'll do. Okay, so there we go. Um, so whatever value you put in this value node, the math will take care of the rest of it. So I could increase that to two and it will change the size of everything, decrease it to one and we've got a different look as well. I found that 1.5 gives me a nice look. You can of course change the scale as well in the mapping node. Um, and if you want to change the color of the dots, you can change the color here, here and also here. They're independent of each other. Um, and if you want to sort of really change the scale of the dots to something different again you would change that in these math nodes one two three 
I think that's everything. If you've got any questions, of course, please feel free to drop them below the video on YouTube. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this and have found it useful in some way, shape or form. Uh, I had good fun sort of working all this out, so I would appreciate a thumbs up if you could. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe for future content, that would be great also. Just before I go though, let me render this out for you so you can see what it looks like. And I'm applying a denoising filter as well with a low sample count. There you go. Looks all right, doesn't it? Of course, you can animate this and do whatever you want with it. Um, it's just really there for you to have a play with. Okay, that's it for this one. See you again next time. Thank <music> you.